So about this presentation, so see, our target is that we want to tell you all that what should your so what should be your profile in regards to ML AI or data science in general. So first of all, we'll talk about the projects that you can do, the resume, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, where you can apply. So the, this was the question that was asked at the start of the session. So we'll tell you that where you can find for internships. Then there is this topic like you know what about stipend? Will we get paid or will we not be not be paid, etc. Then the PPO part. So PPO is but nothing but pre-placement offer. So if you are interning at a particular firm or a company and you are pretty good at it, and basically they can offer you pre-placement offer if you are performing well. So that is also one aspect of it. So first of all, if you have tried to apply it anywhere, you must have seen that you know for the application they say that we want a freshie who has some experience of five years or two years. You know, so this is a joke that is going on every time that. They need a fresher with some experience, but we should, you know, I will get to these these points. You know that how do you get experience? What projects you can do, etc. So first of all, let us talk about resume. So uniqueness. So so first of all, your resume should be unique because see, uh, everyone has built normal ML models. So if you do, if you started with ML, everyone has projects on or uh, you know models on Titanic data set, Iris data sets. What new did you do? You know, that's the point of uniqueness. So suppose you tuned in the hyperparameters of that model. You did something new. You did, you visualized the models pr properly. You built a proper ML pipeline for normal Titanic Iris data. This is just the basic part. But why is your project unique? That should be the point. Then prioritize. So prioritize means mention the important things first in your resume. So suppose, for example, you have good projects, then internships. Then mention those good projects first because you know whoever is viewing your resume, the company employees, they will first of all start seeing from the first, right? They'll not start from last. And come on, we are human, so it's sometimes they might not read the last point. So prioritize the things that are more good, you know. So if you have good projects, mention those first and highlight the important points. Then LaTeX. So LaTeX is actually they render resume in a beautiful manner. So basically, you have more control in formatting than using MS Word or Google Docs. And for companies, they use MS sorry resume parsers. So if you use LaTeX, it can parser it. The resume parser will be better to get your skills, etc. Then don't bluff. So your resume is like an ad of you selling yourself to the company, right? So don't bluff that if you have just started with ML, don't write that yes, I know TensorFlow, yes, I know deep learning. Don't just bluff about it. You should actually know and know the depths of it. Because if you get selected by any chance and if you go for the interview, then they're going to ask you each and every, basically they'll ask you questions according to your resume. So if you have written deep learning, you need to know what deep learning is. So don't just bluff about it. Then your resume should be ATS friendly. So an ATS means an applicant tracking system. So basically, when it parses it, it is the ATS is nothing but a recruitment uh, software. So often used, it is used by employees to collect, sort, and rank the resumes that they receive. So to get, so basically, if you want your resume to be ATS friendly, I have I will send you a link that or a medium article that you that will just explain you know that how should your resume be ATS friendly because we don't have the time to cover all the points in depth. Then generic. So don't use generic statements. You know that I have implemented TensorFlow in this this X Y Z. Instead of that, state out the points that are or state, instead point out the USP of your project. Like mention the use of modern engineering tools that you have used or the tools that are actually used in this in this industry. So suppose instead of writing I have used I know how to use TensorFlow, you can write you have used this particular model. You got this particular accuracy. So basically, don't just use the generic statements. Like don't just write you know problem solving. You have don't use those generic statements. Then links. So in your resume, you need to have hosted links of your projects. Some people put their GitHub repos, but it is an added advantage if you host the project. And it won't take time to host your projects using Flask, right? It is very easy. So you just have to host your projects instead of providing GitHub repos. And first of all, mention a link. So basically, if you have a project section inside it, you should have links to each and every project. It can be a GitHub repo. But if you have hosted the project, that is an added advantage. Then iterative process. So your resume is nothing but an iterative process. So you have to show it to others and change it accordingly. So you can show it to your friends. Then the next thing you can show it to your seniors. You can suppose you know someone in the industry. You can show it to company professionals and take their advice because they know what do they want in a resume. So you have to basically it is an iterative process. So if they they suggest you any changes, you need to change those things. 
then impact. So actually your resume or the project that you have in your resume, they should highlight the impact of your project. So writing the name of the project is fine. What tech stack you have used is fine. But you know, what is the impact of that project? How did it impact the society? That's the important part. Then that's about resume. And actually uh, that tw Twitter link that I've shared below, that is a thread that will actually be uh, be a perfect one for you guys to let's just see, you know, that how to, how to write a resume. So I don't think it's clickable, but never mind. Like these guys can look at it afterwards. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so I just want to add a couple of points to what Adit just spoke about. So as far as like formatting with latex is concerned, you guys may use Overleaf. Now Overleaf is an online editor similar to Giro. Other, like except for the fact that it renders like latex. And so this is one of the templates that I personally use for my resume. So you guys may try experimenting with this. So it's quite simple actually like latex can be thought of something that is similar to HTML. Like you can just take this template and like try editing it out. I'll put the link in the chat box. So like you guys may try playing with some of these templates. There are quite a few templates available on Overleaf. But yeah, this is one of the templates that I personally use. So uh, yeah, and yeah, I, I, a couple of things. So like, I will just show my resume for a sec for comparison. So now in this case, like I have noted everything. So if you look at the, like some of the points, the sub topics that are like listed beneath the main parts is that basically you need to write the outcomes. It should be outcome oriented. That is in this, for example, when you, when I've written away your ML internet algo analytics, I've written that I analyzed and refined the performance of CNN models for the company's product. So the outcome was that I managed to improve the accuracy of the system, which was later deployed, deployed at the client's end. So like that is one of the outcomes of what I managed to achieve at my, during my tenure at algo. So that is, these are certain points that have to be emphasized on. It should not be just see, I work and work on so and so thing. It should be as to what all you were able to do and what all you were able to achieve. And yeah, talking about projects. So um, please do not overly describe all your projects. It should be just one or two lines. So like, for example, for mass over imagery classification, I have written that I trained a CNN model using efficient net so and so in PyTorch and I achieved so high accuracy. So yeah, like it should be able to, as Aditya mentioned, it should be outcome oriented. That is what all were you able to achieve? Yes, batana chahiye. And like, please do not over describe your project because during your interviews, you will be asked to emphasize or like elaborate upon your projects only. So like if you have written everything already in the resume, the interviewer has pretty much nothing more to like ask about. The interviewer should be curious about you, right? So like you should give a brief summary of what all you implemented and the outcomes. It should be more focused on the outcomes rather than just what it was. So uh, yeah, Aditya, please continue. Yeah. So these are the LinkedIn points. So instead of just reading out the points, I can just show you a LinkedIn profile. So see, first of all, for LinkedIn, you should have a professional profile picture or a background cover that looks professional. Like don't put a random cover, which is not professional. So uh, after that, write about you that what you are interested in. You can write in featured articles that, you know, this is the thing that I do, etc. Now, this is the important part. So when it comes to experience, you just have to write. Uh, so it you can just edit the experience. You guys have used LinkedIn. So I, I know you, I, you, you know, I don't have to explain all of these things in detail, but pro put your experience in a proper way, you know that. So this is important. So what skills did you use? So suppose for this internship, I have used Google Kubernetes engine. I have used deep learning. So this is where it becomes a bit different because you just don't put your experience randomly. You also put that, you know, I have used these things and learned these things from the experiences. Then all of these just are internships and positions, etc. Then in the education part. So first of all, mention your CGPA, etc. Then if you are part of any activities or societies, you can mention your college clubs, etc. Then if you're, I think you guys have honors, right? You, it must have started. So you can also mention that, you know, you are doing minors in a particular domain. So also you can do that. Then comes license and certification. So suppose license and certification. So these are not very important, but, but if you have licenses from say Microsoft Azure or TensorFlow, TensorFlow certifications, then those actually have an impact on your LinkedIn profile. So, and after that, if you have also, you know, have some courses on course or anything, you can also mention it over here in licenses and certification. Part. Then volunteering. So suppose if you have volunteered for any particular NGO and work for them, you can mention it over here. Volunteering is basically a work free of cost. 
then skills so this is the important part so so as i told you all that this skills is linked to the experience so if you have a particular skill you can just edit it and you can write that where you have used that skill so suppose i have used deep learning in in these particular skills and i have also so if you see i have also this course so basically i learned from this course and i implemented it over here and you can have various courses then comes endorsement so you can ask your friends to endorse each other so that actually helps you you guys so i'll come to that afterwards then comes project so projects again you have to mention that what is your project you have to put a link to the project and then so this is a app android app that i had created in the second year so you just have to link the so if i click on show project it will go to the play store and people can actually see that you know there are 500 plus downloads of this particular app then people can understand yeah this project has an impact over people uh, and also mention your creators of course and then honors and awards so suppose if you have won a particular hackathon you can just mention it that yeah i have an award and of suppose you have any publications etc you can mention it yeah yeah so it's quite yeah, yeah just to add some things like it's quite important to keep your linkedin profiles updated because a lot of times like specifically for machine learning you guys will be searching for like internships on uh, on platforms like linkedin itself like a lot of recruiters a lot of companies post job offerings internship offers on linkedin itself so it would be quite helpful for you to for reaching out for these roles on linkedin so please keep your profiles updated and yeah as aditya mentioned certifications do not hold much value unless like exactly. they are something that are really well graded on like the azure or aws certifications which have like actual tests you have to give by going to a test center or something like that so yeah please just don't keep on doing coursera certifications in the hopes that someone will just see that because yeah, i've done this from matter stanford ki mujhe aaram se aise google utha lega nahi hone wala hai wo वो क्योंकि सभी करते हैं ना तो तूने यूनिक क्या किया वो उस पे आता है फिर क्योंकि कोर्स पे सभी ने एंड्रोएनजी का कोर्स किया होता है मतलब तो करो उसका क्या पॉइंट है सर्टिफिकेट कुछ मैटर नहीं करता है उसका क्योंकि वो सभी को मिल जाता है हां आई आल्सो आई मिस्ड वन पार्ट रिकमेंडेशन सो सपोज इफ यू हैव वर्कड इन फॉर अ इंटर्नशिप और एनीथिंग और एज अ रिसर्च इंटर्न यू कैन आस्क पीपल टू रिकमेंड यू ऑन ऑन लिंक्डइन सो Uh, Anupam, do you have a recommendation on your profile that you can show these guys? Oh, uh, I actually have an LOR from a prof. Like I don't have a recommendation. I can show. I think Jinesh, Jinesh, boy, yeah, I'll show Jinesh. Okay. Yeah. So they'll understand what I recommend. So actually, you can ask people to recommend you on LinkedIn. So they write that how did you work and all. So okay, these are all the activities of his education, licenses, and all uh-uh, skills. So see, these are the endorsements that I was talking about. So ask your friends to endorse you guys in a particular skill. It it highlights your profile more, and you get more good job recommendations according to that. So these are the recommendations. So see, suppose Jinesh Bhai has worked under this guy. This guy has wrote about Jinesh that how Jinesh is a very fast learner, etc. So this actually is a very good thing, right? Because if any particular recruit is recruiter is just looking at your profile, they can see yeah, this guy has actually wrote some good things about him. So it is more probable that they might be hiring you okay back to this yeah i guess we can move to the next slide huh. and also sorry uh, just job alert so uh, do you guys know the job alerts on linkedin or do we have to explain it it basically is a feature wherein you can like customize the alerts for certain roles which you are planning to target such as like abhi machine learning interns or data science you are trying to get so if something that pops up with that those particular keywords you are able to essentially get the job alerts ki so and so company is offering this role and like you, you can apply for that directly via linkedin so see this like, is very yeah. important okay because you want to know how to apply this is where you know how to apply so i have a job alert for machine learning for example or data science so you can see if i go to the job section i have customized it so i can get only the job alerts for data scientist computer vision so you can see all of these are ai ai ml related jobs and all of these jobs so these are all jobs and this is according to my filtered search so you can just filter it out so that you get more good recommendations that you can apply to okay so this is very important that's why i just uh, highlighted that point so where to apply so this is first of all the most important slide so we have talked about linkedin job job alerts linkedin also has this ease apply so if you have everything so as anubham said you need to update your linkedin regularly so if your linkedin is updated you can easily apply through linkedin through the job alerts as we talked about then there is this google jobs will come to google jobs uh, okay i'll do i'll just go to google so google jobs is the most actually this has benefited me the most anubham has a different thing but for me see, suppose 
if i even if i just google machine learning internships so see this is the google jobs platform so if you view on this 100 plus more jobs you can actually see everything so over here if i have this machine learning internship in pune you can see the company where you can apply to so it can also have apply on linkedin apply on glassdoor apply on angel.co or anything so basically you can see everything how much do they offer and everything so you can see there are so many opportunities available and i have seen this that many people ask me question you know how to apply how to apply so i think this has helped me the most to just google it and just go to google jobs and google about machine learning data science or whatever domain that you want to it's not only for machine learning of course you can google for web development internships etc google jobs has helped me the most okay and company websites and job opening so suppose you want to intern for a particular company say goldman sachs for example now it is not a ml company it just came to my mind so if you go to the website of goldman sachs they have a section of job openings in which they can simply say that you know there is this opening available for this particular job this internship has opened so after you look at an opening so first of all you can apply to directly or you can apply via a referral so if you want to apply via referral you just need to look at the job number or the job id on that particular job opening and suppose now you know someone in goldman sachs who is working for goldman sachs and they can refer you so you can write a mail to them in that mail you should like this is the basic structure that should be so tell them let them know that how do you know them or how you both are connected send in your resume and send in the job that you want to apply for and keep it very short and formal because you are asking for a referral so it should be very formal and i suppose everyone has a template written you know that uh, for a referral so keep that template ready i think so you guys will have to start writing these mails so just keep one template ready and don't just you know aise chapo mat us template ko thoda sa change bhi karo har har baar matlab all cold mails ko bhi kyunki ek template hota hai usko waise ka waise mat chapo thoda sa change karo thoda sa edit wagera karo usko mm-hmm.